Now, this YouTube video is gonna be about how I fuel hybrid training, three simple sustainable steps. And they're all things that I literally used to fall into the trap of believing um, just due to social media. So with that being said, let's get into the YouTube video. We're gonna rip a five mile run and talk about this first concept. So let's head to the trail. It's a bad day to be some miles. I got my coffee, I have my carbs. It's a good day. Best way to start the day. So, just got new shoes. These are the SC New Balance Trainers. These are my favorite shoe. I know I say that every single time, but actually my favorite shoe, I swear. Like I'm done saying this, I know I said this before, but these are my favorite shoe. Um, not paid or anything to say this shit. I just bought a pair of New Balances, heard about them. SC Trainers, fire, I love them. Cushiony, bounce, bouncy for a heavier dude, um, and also just anybody who likes to run on the clouds, that's what it feels like. So yeah, let's go rip this run. Just like getting in a truck, our bodies are the same way. Would you not fill up your vehicle before traveling across the country, before going to work? No, that's just the same way as your body is with fasted training. You're not gonna perform as well if you don't have the fuel. I used to train fasted all the time because I thought, you know, I was so much stronger mentally. I thought I was just gonna crush my workouts because everybody else said that they did it. These bodybuilders did it, you know. And it turns out it made it worse because you don't have that fuel. Just like, it, like I said, if you didn't put these on the truck, it wouldn't go. Now, the way I do it is I try to get 40 to 60 grams of carbs before my run or my lifts. So. In the morning, I'll have a Go Bar, or I'll have some oats, or I'll have a banana and some honey. Just get some fuel in. And those fuel sources, the best that your body runs off of is going to be carbohydrates, the most efficient. I look at carbs as jet fuel. Essentially, our bodies just digest the carbs and use it as glycogen. Now, that glycogen is what gives our body and our muscles energy to contract and to perform. So if you're low in glycogen, hence fasted, or you didn't eat enough the night before, you're gonna feel like shit. And a lot of people say it's because they don't have motivation or they're not good performers. And at the end of the day, I think it's just because you're not fueling your body. As I drive this big diesel, it's gonna use fuel, you know, depending on how bad and how hard I push that, that pedal. But it's the same thing, you know, I like doing freaking burnouts and shit like mud in well your body is the same way if you move throughout the day and you do these high energy expenditures such as running weight training that burns fuel just like a truck would burn fuel as i drive now if your truck is sitting in a parking lot and you keep filling the tank with carbs and food in general it's going to overflow that's what makes you gain fat it's not necessarily the nutrition it's not utilizing the nutrition or over fueling if this truck sat in the parking lot i just filled it it would overflow and gas would be spilling out everywhere and i'd probably get the cops called on me probably wouldn't be a good time so yeah same way you fuel your vehicle to drive and get you to A to B is gonna be the same way that you do with your body, but you just gotta be mindful of how much you're eating. That's why I track my food for years and I learned the nutrition that my body needs. Essentially, I like the saying, burn hot, eat a lot. You eat the food and then you burn it off and you use it. So let's go do that. Eight mile run at a 7.33 minute per mile pace. Average and max heart rate was 135 beats per minute. Max was 142, right where we wanna be, baby. Hybrid, AF. Second tip as a hybrid athlete is prioritizing protein. Now, this is important to do after your runs or after your lifts. The reason why is the body breaks down and tears muscle fibers when you do a strenuous activity. So what consuming protein does is it helps rebuild back those muscle fibers and the body that was broken down to come back stronger. Hence why workouts are made to break you down and make you stronger. Just like anything in life, 
when you get broken down or when you go through something hard, you always come out strong. As long as you keep persevering and pushing through, your body gives what it asks of you and it will adapt. We're adaptable machines, we're hybrid. That's what it, we're made to do. So just like the mind, it will adapt and form a better, stronger stimulus to accomplish whatever stress or shit you're going through in your life. And the same with protein. So I'm gonna stir up a protein coffee. What I like to do is I like to aim for around 30 to 40 grams of protein after my workouts. Then for the whole day's total, I like to get at least one to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So having protein powders, having red meat, chicken in your diet, eggs, egg whites are gonna be a staple in a diet that prioritizes recovery and building muscle as a hybrid athlete. Now, as I make this protein coffee, I'm just gonna cover everything that I kind of made mistakes of around protein. So I used to, when I was younger and I didn't realize the benefits to it, I used to kind of eat whatever I wanted. Um, but at the same time, I was like, why am I not really getting full when I eat like pasta? Or why am I not getting, um, you know, recovering the right way when I'm just eating candy and stuff. And I see this really commonly in the endurance space. See, bodybuilding taught me a lot of the importance of protein, but in the endurance space, a lot of people think they could eat whatever they want and maybe 10% can. I would say the majority of people should focus on protein and carbs and then let the fats fall into place based on their caloric demand. But essentially what protein does for myself and everybody else, it helps you stay lean because it is the most satiating macronutrient. So not only does it help replenish your body, but for example, like if you're gonna go eat a bunch of junk food at night, like I like to do sometimes, even though I stopped doing that habit, bad habit, you're not gonna go grab a chicken breast. You're not gonna eat a pound of beef. You're not gonna, you know, go crazy on protein shakes. What you're gonna go crazy on is those carbs and stuff because they spike your blood sugar, they spike your dopamine, and they make you feel amazing. Whereas protein makes you feel satiated. So my tip to anybody that is struggling with weight as a hybrid athlete or recovering is just to up your protein and you'll feel a lot more satiated, a lot more balanced in your diet, and it'll help you recover and perform and get some bigger biceps maybe. And then also, if you take a scoop, make sure it's a mountain. Um, we don't half send here, we full scoop it and really send it on the protein. <laughs> Because I love it. Like I could be a protein um, advocator or uh, maybe it's like an addiction kind of. Like if I could, I would probably sleep with this right next to my bed. As a hybrid athlete, prioritize protein, get at least one to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight throughout the day, and then try to get 30 to 40 grams of protein either before or after, ideally after your workouts and space it throughout the day. That way it's more manageable to get it in as it is very satiating. It's hard to get it in at one time. Space it out throughout the day. So for example, today, this morning after the run, just making a protein coffee, whereas some people will, would just drink coffee, I can make it taste better. Get the benefits of the protein and building muscle effects by adding it to my coffee. And it tastes amazing. Now a little side note, make sure you mix the almond milk and the protein separately and then add the coffee so it doesn't clump. The second tip of fueling as a hybrid athlete. It's time to go weight train. So today's workout is gonna be a pull workout and a pull workout essentially for me is just back and then biceps. I like to alternate the pulling movement with a pull from up high and a pull from down low. So I'll alternate the, between the two. So essentially I'll start with a pull from up high and then do a pull from down low and then pull from up high, pull from down low. And essentially I do that for like four sets around eight to 10 reps or three sets around 10 to 12 reps. So that's kind of like my rep consistency right now. Now I do that because that is for me and for most people where you build hypertrophy. I would say any range from eight to 12 is where you build the most hypertrophy. And then anything below eight is where you build um, strength. So right now my goal isn't necessarily strength. Yes, I wanna get stronger, but it is to bring back that muscle memory that I may have lost during my um, ultra marathon. So increasing the volume allows me to hit more hypertrophy workout than more of a power slash strength focus. You know, I'm convinced hitting biceps make you faster, even though it makes no sense. It just, uh, I think it just helps. That's in my head. Don't listen to my advice. But the bigger the arms, the faster the miles. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. So it just gives me a better reason to hit biceps more. I love hitting biceps, getting the full stretch, getting the pump, and essentially, like I said, give you a recap. 
hypertrophy anywhere from 8 to 12 if you're trying to build muscle as a hybrid athlete and then if you're trying to build strength anything below it doesn't change whether you're a hybrid athlete or not just make sure that um, you know you specify according to your goals at rep range and then I like to always finish a workout with either push-ups or pull-ups on a push day I'll do push-ups on a pull day I'll do pull-ups and same thing but I don't count the reps I just do three to four sets for an AMRAP after the push or the pull day. So that's the weight training session. Now to our last and final tip. And that's gonna be how to look at food and how not to demonize it and how to approach it in the best mental way and also to fuel your body. So let's do it. Don't demonize food and look at food as fuel. Not good or bad. As you can see, there's various different options here. This is just an example, but look at food as fuel and a way to enjoy yourself. So let me dive in. There are whole foods close to their natural state. They have tons of fiber, tons of nutrients, and they're nutrient dense. And then there's processed foods, which are altered from their original state through cooking and refining, which ultimately leads to a lack of nutrients, but they do taste great. The main difference between these two options is whole foods are going to fuel your training and they're going to fill you up due to their nutrient density because they are not processed. Like I said, they're in their original state. Whereas processed, yes, they may taste good, but they are not at their original state and they do not provide the same filling effect, fibers, and nutrients as the whole foods do. Now, calorie is a calorie. There's just a trade-off. Do you want satiation, which could be proteins as well as fats, like avocados, red meat, um, these carb sources, rice, oats, fruit, or would you like processed foods, which are gonna be the M&Ms and the Cheez-Its and um, the high calorie croissants at Starbucks, etc. The difference is you are going to be more satiated because there's nutrient density in whole foods. So your body will absorb the nutrients and it's going to be able to fuel your training easier and maintain a good body composition because you're going to feel more satiated, more full. Now the dose is the poison. So I'm not saying you can't have these M&Ms and these Cheez-Its. Like I said, a calorie is a calorie, but when it comes to satiation, they are different. Now, there is no good and bad. And what I meant by that is saying, the dose does the poison. You could eat 100 bananas and you would gain weight. You could eat 1,000 M&Ms and you would gain weight. You could eat five pizzas and you would gain weight. You could eat three, 4,000 calories of avocados on one sitting and gain weight. So it dose does a poison. But when we talk about hybrid training and food as fuel, the mistake I made was thinking that I could eat as much or whole foods as I want and I would be fine. But it's still a calorie equation at the end of the day. But I did find that whole foods are going to fuel my training better and allow me to perform better. They're gonna allow me to recover better. There's less inflammation because there's less calories and more nutrients in these foods. But like I said, the dose is a poison. So I found, and what I learned is instead of compl cutting completely out of the fun foods, you sprinkle it in as like a little treat, but the dose is the poison. So I'll look at those processed foods and I'll say, okay, I can only have a little bit of this because I know the effect of having a lot of it and what it does with inflammatory and how it affects my training sessions. Whereas whole foods, I can eat a lot more of them without those detrimental effects, feel satiated, feel my training, feel amazing. And that's the difference. It's a trade-off. What do you want more? Do you want the little snack that makes you feel a little bit of dopamine, makes you happy, makes you smile? That's cool. You don't have to eat the whole box. Now, I would mainly say fill your diet with whole foods and then sprinkle it in. Like I said, have your little sweet treat or whatever at the end of the night, but just make sure it falls within your goals. Say you want to lose weight, make sure it falls within your diet, calorie range, or whatever you have going on. Now, this is why I said don't demonize food because you can utilize these all as tools, one to taste good and one to satiate you, but when it comes to hybrid training, as far as diet goes, you're gonna be best off choosing a whole foods approach where you eat mostly 
non-processed foods to fill in the gaps because you are gonna be running and lifting, which is gonna need a lot of recovery and a lot of nutrients, hence nutrient-dense foods. And then because you're burning so many calories and because you're expending a little, having a chocolate, a little piece of chocolate at night to curb your craving isn't gonna hurt you, but having three bars of chocolate will. It will cause an inflammatory reaction mostly. So just be mindful and that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay corn fed. Just wanted to help you guys out with this video. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll catch you guys in the next one.